What's up marketers? One of the questions that you ask me the most is how do I develop a creative strategy that converts for Facebook ads and TikTok ads and Snapchat ads? AKA, how do I make ads that make people wanna buy? And I'm not gonna lie, it takes a lot of work. It's not just as easy as, oh, I decided to make a features point out ad or I decided to make a TikTok style ad. That's a great place to start, but in order to make ads that convert, you need to understand your customer inside and out and also know your unique selling propositions in terms of the larger market. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I figure that out for all of my clients. This video is gonna show you the five-step system that we use at Thesis to develop a client's initial creative strategy and our ongoing process for developing creative that continues to convert. And if you happen to find this content valuable, please be sure to give me a like on this video or subscribe to my channel because those small actions really do help me out as a creator. I don't have a course and I have a full-time job where I do this every single day for my clients. I just actually like making these videos for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Step one, you have to establish the creative foundation, aka what has the client done so far? Before we can understand which creative direction we should take, we first need to understand the branding guidelines and everything that has already been tested up until this point. During the sales process, this frankly normally begins in the ads library. The Facebook ads library is actually an amazing tool that I use almost every single day to see what types of ads brands are running at any given time. And when I'm first becoming acquainted with a potential client, I like to gain a high level understanding of the current ads that are being run in their account. And these are the questions that I always ask myself. Is there a variety of creative being tested in the account? What's missing? Do they tend to use more branded or more user generated content? What types of UGC ads are being tested? Or are they using more single testimonial type ads? Or are they trying out reels or TikTok style ads? Are they currently running any whitelisted campaigns with influencers? And what type of messaging themes are present in not only the copy, but also the creative assets themselves. Now, once ad account access is given, then we like to do a deep dive on the data that's actually in the ad account. The metrics that we're analyzing are going to be unique to every single type of client, but for the most part, we're looking at creatives that drove the most amount of purchases. Now, if you wanna deep dive in the exact metrics that I'm using when analyzing these Facebook ad accounts for my clients or for potential clients, be sure to take a look at this video where I actually show you my exact column dashboard that I use every single day. But when I'm beginning to work with a client and develop their creative strategy, these are the important metrics that I'm looking at and documenting. Number one, what were the top performers over the last six months? What are the top performers over the last 30 days? How's that changed? What have been the worst performing creative tests over the last six months? This is gonna help us establish in broad strokes the type of content that we're gonna wanna dig deeper on or the type of content that we're gonna wanna avoid. As a gut check, we're also gonna look at the conversion rates for all these ads. And around this time too, I also like to check in with the client to see what creative fails that they experience from their perspective. Sometimes it doesn't always match up with what's in an ad account. Number two, if they have video creative, I'm also gonna do a deep dive on the videos that have the best hook rates in the account. And this is gonna tell me which imagery and messaging is doing the best job of hooking that initial user. And then next I'm gonna be cross analyzing hold rates and unique outbound click through rates. And when using these metrics in tandem, you're gonna be able to see which imagery and messaging does the best job of holding the user, which is that hold rate, and also encouraging that low impact first initial action, which is that click through rate. Now, a big note here, in order to track hold rates and hook rates and even conversion rates, you're going to need to create a custom metric inside of your ads manager dashboard. Surprisingly, this is not already available inside of ads manager. And here's exactly how you can track those metrics. For hook rate, you're just going to need three second video views divided by impression. For hold rates, you're gonna need through plays divided by impressions. And then for conversion rates, it's gonna be purchases divided by link links. Additionally, if there are really big swings in performance for different parts of the funnel, prospecting versus retargeting, then I'm also gonna make note of that. Another really important thing that we're gonna be looking at here is the breakdown data. And there's several different data points that we're actually gonna be, be looking at. We're gonna be looking at number one, age. So we wanna really see where more of the spend is going to across the different age groups, as well as gender. And really we want to be looking at these two data points to, as a gut check to make sure that we're actually targeting to the right types of people. Another really important breakdown that we're gonna look at as well are going to be placements. So it's really important to know if a majority of your spend is being spent on Facebook or Instagram, 
Instagram stories, Instagram reels, or something like that. And this is really going to be a part of our overall process. This is something that we're always gonna be looking at in our ad accounts, but it's really important when we first jump into that ad account to take a look at those data points to start framing exactly how Facebook is spending the cash. Now, once our initial deep dive is done on the ad account, then we're also gonna be going through our client's branding guidelines. This is not the only time that we're gonna be doing this. I often find that people need more than one look at a client's branding guidelines. It's also during this time that we're gonna work really closely with the client to understand strict do's and don'ts and other qualitative information about the brand. Now, depending on the team at Thesis, we tend to document all of these findings in a simple Word document or even a slide deck. And then it's on to external research. Step number two is to conduct reputation and competitive research. And very subjectively, this is my most favorite part of the research process. And the first thing that we're gonna do here is see how the brand is representing itself organically. We'll do a deep dive on all organic social media accounts, sign up for the email list, and also sift through the website. These are the big things that we're gonna be looking for when doing all of that. Number one, what content and messaging should we borrow? What benefits seem to be most commonly represented? How does the brand respond to comments on organic social media? And what are some of the most common questions users seem to have? Also, of course, what types of content seem to drive the most engagement? Be sure to look not only at Instagram, but also TikTok. Once you've sifted through the brand's organic social media channels and you've checked out their emails and their website, then you're gonna wanna do a deep dive on customer testimonials and experiences. And it's in this part of the process that we like to think as a customer who's getting ready to convert. So think about the kind of things that they're going to be researching and looking for. We'll conduct Google searches on things like brand name or brand name review. From there, we're gonna be separating bona fide press hits, either earned or paid, from things things like review sites so that we can gain a much better understanding of how the public views the brand. While sifting through all the press and all the reviews, we're also going to be extracting messaging that we can then use in our ads. And then it is on to competitor research. Now, unfortunately, we do not have ad account access to our clients' competitors, but we can still take a look at the Facebook ads library and draw informed conclusions about what type of ads are performing the best. And we're going to look at this by seeing how long the ad has actually been running. And the idea is this, the longer an ad has run, then the better it's performing. We're also gonna take a look at the TikTok ads library to gain a better understanding of what competitors have the top ads in the space. Typically, we're gonna be looking at conversion campaigns that are segmented to industry-specific niches. And while looking through both of the ad libraries, these are the questions we're gonna be documenting. What trends are they using? What treatments are they using? Is there anything that's being continuously repeated that we should also test into? And of course, how can we execute it better? What hooks are they using and how can we build from that? Which platforms are they they primarily developing content for? Are there any obvious gaps in their creative strategies? And essentially all these questions are helping us to realize what opportunities there are for us to capitalize on. To close out our external research, we also like to hop on Google Trends and see some of the broader trends that are going on in that client-specific niche or industry. Step number three is to compile a list of features, benefits, and testimonials that can be used in messaging. Now there are two major parts to this step. Number one, compile the best testimonials across social media, and their websites. And keep an eye out for which features and benefits seem to be mentioned the most. You should have already done this in the previous step. And number two, digest the client's branding guidelines again, and any other documents that they might have to information about the brand. This list is gonna help us formulate the right messaging for the content. Again, the actual format of these lists tend to be left up to individual teams, but oftentimes a simple Google sheet is effective. You just wanna be sure that you can track what has been tested and in what format. This portion of the creative strategy process also involves asking the client tons of questions about their brand and the messaging to make sure that we're headed down the right direction. And I like to do this after I do the internal and external research so that I can ask more pointed questions. While the actual sales process, so before a client is onboarded and contracts are signed, I like to make sure that clients are the right fit for Thesis's creative services. It's during this part of the strategy process that I'm diving deep on customer avatars and how we can create content that speaks to them. So here are some of the questions that I ask clients to gain more clarity around their customer and their 
value props. And if you're a business owner, it's also really good to document these things as well. Number one, broad strokes, who is your customer? And what sets your product or service apart from its competitors? Frankly, why should a customer buy your product as opposed to a competitor's product? What are some of the problems that your customers face before finding your product or service? What are the other big stressors in their lives? What other brands do your customers love? And what do your customers enjoy doing in their free time? What values and experiences do your customers prioritize above all else? Now, once we compiled a list of the best testimonials and we have an idea of the features and benefits that we most prominently want to feature in the ad creative, then we're going to start prioritizing the actual production methods that we'll want to get this creative produced. Essentially, do we need to hire creators to make this type of content? Do we need to engage with the studio production crew? And what can be done with the current content with just the post-production team? Step number four, this is the exciting part. This is where you're going to be developing the initial creative roadmap, aka actually picking out the types of ads that you're going to be creating. So at this point, we've completed all of the initial creative and client research. Now it's time to bring it all together and develop that initial creative roadmap. And at Thesis, we like to deliver content to our clients weekly. So when beginning to work with a new client, we actually like to iron out that roadmap for the first month. So this nets out to four creative concepts that we need to create tickets for. And yes, at Thesis, we do work on a creative ticketing system, as do most agencies. <laughs> and here's how that process goes. Number one, tickets are normally created by a growth manager or a team lead, which irons out the exact type of concept and messaging that we want to execute on. This ticket is then sent via a project management software. We use Asana um, and then prioritized by the growth director who prioritizes all the projects for the month. And at this point, video editors are also selected for each ticket. Then number three, a video editor will begin to work on the ticket, normally a few days before the actual submission deadline. Each ticket is going to result in three to six individual assets that are executing on the same creative strategy. So essentially, we're going to be testing the same core asset, but one very very important variable is going to be different. Oftentimes this is something like the hook rate. If you want to do a deep dive on how we do our creative testing process at Thesis, this video is going to show you all about that. Now I do want to note that if UGC creators or even the studio and vision needs to be engaged, then those are completely separate processes. And ultimately it's going to take anywhere from four to six weeks to get those finalized assets. Now one of the big questions is how do we actually decide which creative strategies to execute on? And the reality is, is once we get to the stage and we've completed all of that external and internal research, we tend to have a pretty good idea of which concepts we want to try. However, if the growth and creative teams need additional ideas, we do have tons of notion boards that outline a bunch of creative concepts that we've tested and have been winners across all of thesis. So we simply select the creative concepts that we want to use and then write out the tickets for our post-production team to execute on. And it's inside of these tickets where we're going to outline the exact type of messaging that we want to use based on on all of the research that we already did in the first three steps. And another question is how do we zero in on the messaging that's going to make users convert? And there are a few different ways that we do this, again, depending on the teams. Some of our teams really like using the ADA framework. This is really popular in the advertising industry, which stands for attention, interest, desire, and action. And specifically when scripting out UGC, we tend to like to use the simple outline that we can then plug and play all the messaging that we pulled from our research. So this is what a typical UGC outline looks like. Number one, you have the hook. So what type of imagery and messaging do we want to use in that first three seconds to get the user's attention? Number two, we like to use a problem agitator. So how can we agitate or further describe a common problem that our users face? And then number three, we do a product intro. So we position the product as a solution to these problems. And then if there's some kind of like in-depth product explanation or a quiz that we have to prep our users for, then we also like to do a product how-to section. And then you're going to showcase the product benefits or testimonials, aka showing the better life realized after using your product, and then closing out with a really catchy CTA or call to action. Now, as you're building out this outline, another really important thing you're going to need to consider is what part of awareness your customers are at. You have to know if they're aware of their problem and if they're aware of potential solutions or how many other solutions they've tempted. These questions are going to help frame the angle that you want to take in your messaging. So at the end of the day, a sample script could look something like this. Quick, hurry up and pause because I'm not going to go through this entire thing. <laughs> the summary for step number four is going to seem way easier than it actually is. This is probably going to be the longest step in your process. You know, number one, actually ironing out the first few creatives that you want to make for your clients or for your brand. 
and then writing out the script or the scripts to be used with that actual ad content and then the actual creating process. I would say that from a client initially onboarding to getting the first few creative tickets, it takes about three to four weeks. Now for step number five, I wanna talk a little bit more about our ongoing process. Now everything up to this point is essentially how we do creative onboarding and how we develop that initial creative strategy. But a client's creative strategy is by no means finished at this point. It still requires constant ongoing work and check-ins to make sure that we're continuously improving and learning from the content that we're testing. And in a nutshell, our ongoing creative process looks something like this. Number one, creative meetings are held monthly with each client. And here we're gonna go over tested creative, learnings, winners, losers, everything to do with the creative content that we tested that month. It's also during this conversation that we're gonna be ironing out the other four creative concepts that we want to test in the next month. And for number two, dialing back in to that creative content flywheel, once a week we are going to be developing new content for our clients. Each batch will then go through a QA and approval process. And that's gonna look something like this. First, an asset is going to be completed by a video editor. This is essentially a rough draft. The asset is then QA'd by a growth lead. And once it's approved internally, then it's going to be sent to the client. Oftentimes, a client will have a simple edit to make on that, at which point that request will then go back to the team, edited by the video editor, and then sent back to final approval for the client. And then once the asset is finalized and approved, then it is going to be launched in the ad account. In terms of how we're going to be monitoring those assets, we are gonna be monitoring those assets that's pretty much on a daily basis, but we're going to be making decisions on whether or not to kill or scale at a little bit longer time period, anywhere between three to seven days total. And ongoing research is always being conducted throughout the month. We're always gonna be conducting internal research on the brand, seeing what types of content they're putting out on their organic social media posts, what types of emails they're sending out, and of course, like which one of those performed best. And then externally, we're always gonna be conducting competitor research on our competitors' ads libraries, as well as hopping in the TikTok ads library as well. We'll always continue to research on industry and platform-wide trends too. Which then, after all this, will then bring us back to another creative meeting. And really the big summary here is that creative strategy is never over or finalized or finished. You're always analyzing and strategizing how to get better. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. Um, if you guys really do make sure to execute on all the five steps of this process, you, you will see the difference in your creative, I promise. Now, um, if you have any other questions, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.